and very late it was, when Roland came at last to the great pass of Roncesvalles, that climbs like a noose, twisting and turning, twisting and turning up the great hills. High was that road, and long, sad, against the mountains made of shadow, against the living, living hills, that silent daunted the spirit at the last. And slow, Roland and Oliver, and the Bishop of Vimont, Turpin, and all the holy paladin went up that high hill, and slow, and yet slower. For the sun had started to set, and an ice wind blew, for the north wind always blew through that cleft in the mountains. But as the sun started to set, with the eyes of an old archer of ancient, the ancient empire of France, Oliver looked above, and he saw there an host, full thirty times more than the paladin, armed to the teeth with helmets, with spikes in them, and mighty bows made of compound yew, and mattocks and spears and javelins. And he pointed to Roland and said, Look, that is an ambush, or I am a fool. We cannot fight against them. They have the advantage of the hills. They lie like a trap, like the noose upon our neck, like this pass was indeed ready to choke us. Holy Roland, will you not sound that horn, Oliphant, that dies by your sword's side? That horn that will bring us aid, that even Charlemagne, if he had got to far off Rocamador, would hear and come, and come in the very nick of time. And Roland said, What tale is this? What tale of folly? What cowardice is this? I will not run away from a fight, no fear. And Turpin, looking at the host, said, There's no point anyway. We'll kill as many as we can, and then you'll sound the horn. We're dead anyway. And just at that moment, the press of the Saracen fell from the hills, bringing with them the bows and the mattocks, throwing the javelins, and one by one they found the holes in the Frankish armour, and all the Franks fought with all their bravery and all their might, one by one. Even they started to be worsted, blinded as they were, by rocks thrown on on high, by spears, by swords, by most of all the poisoned bows and arrows that fell amongst them. But just as Roland started to pull the paladin together and lead them up the hill, and it looked like they might be able to hack a way through, there was suddenly a cry behind. And once more Oliver pointed, but coming fast behind them, with fifty times more their host and more, there came the finest soldiers of the old sultan. There came the assassins with black armour, pressing hard. And once again Oliver turned to his friend and said, Will you not sound that horn of yours? And once again Roland said, No, most foes are plenty for us. When we finish killing them, I will sound the horn. And Oliver turned to him with a baleful look and said, My friend, if you follow this course, you will not see your betrothed, my sister, again. I will take her from you, for she deserves better than you. A man so bravery that he's folly. The bravery, brave, that it turns to folly. And so Roland said, So be it. And Turpin, who stood by his side, said, We'll see nobody else anyway. Let us get us to the work. And fast they turned upon the work. And soon, soon they were killing as many as they could, but great was the best host that assailed them, far greater now, from behind and in front. And Roland led them to a little hill to the side of the pass, and there they stood at bay. And at last a great boulder hit Oliver full in the head. And he turned with dying eyes and said, Roland, sound your horn, for my friend, there is bravery and there is foolishness. Never now will I see my sister again. Never now will you see her also. And choking he fell. And one by one and one by one the holy paladin, the mightiest soldiers in Charlemagne's army, fell there on the pass on the pass of Roncesvalles, and had at last Roland stood at bay. Now such was the power of his sword that none had pierced his armour, and his spirit was desperate, for he knew that this was the moment he must lay his sword aside. For one man alone could stand against no men so many could not stand against so many, and he must summon Charlemagne. But he knew the minute he laid his sword aside, his fate would be sealed and death would come. But just as he thought on this, he saw one come against him, dressed in a golden suit of armour, mightier than the rest, with a great, great big sword, a scimitar. And Roland knew him to be the sultan. 
and seeing that, he threw his sword straight through the sultan's breast, pinning him to the rocks behind. And as all his hosts stood at bay and in terror, Roland sounded the horn. Loud it sounded over the lands, loud it sounded over the mountains and the forests, loud it sounded to far off Rocamador. And hearing that, Charlemagne, weary as he was, got his host ready for war. And loud it sounded in far off Saragos, and hearing that, by some twist of fate, the widow of the murdered sultan knew her fate, and started to prepare for it. And loud it sounded in the heavens, and the angels came. For as he sounded it, the very temples of Roland burst asunder. And it was up to the angels to carry him to heaven, immaculate, a paladin, unmatched, then and now. <laughs>